and with heart and voice for Jefferson and Liberty. That song is still part of our living memory with many others. And there's 640 acres of Jefferson's Monticello enshrined today as a national monument. Take significant battles, plenty of songs. Why come ye hither, redcoats? Your mind with madness fills. In our valleys there is danger. There's danger on our hills. Oh, hear you not the singing of the bugle loud and free. Soon you'll hear the ringing of the rifle from the tree. That's about Bennington. It's a good fighting song, and there are others. And there's 208 acres and a bronze map to commemorate the Battle of Bennington during the Revolutionary War. You couldn't tell us from the songs or from the shrines, but it takes more than some good ditties and some stout-hearted men to fight and win a revolution. It takes industry. And that's where the great Batstow furnace in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey comes in. You see, the Revolutionary Army needed that furnace to fire up the cannons and the cannonballs, to provide the fittings for the wagons of war and the caissons, needed it for the Navy, for its anchors and fittings and chains, and even for the shallow pans in which they boiled and evaporated the seawater when they were so short of salt. Well, now, how does a grateful nation commemorate the great Basto Furnace, that industrial landmark in American history? I'll show you. Come on. This way. Behold, the great Basto Furnace. A fitting memorial to America's glorious past. What happened to the great Fasto furnace? Where did it go? It certainly did go because that's all that remains. To understand the answer to that question, I guess, to understand ourselves, we have to take a look into the past. Charles Reed of Burlington, New Jersey, was a very wealthy and influential man. In fact, he'd been Chief Justice of the Jersey Supreme Court. And Charles Reed decided that the Batstow River would make a perfect site for an iron furnace. After all, the streams and rivers would provide enough water power to move the bellows that provided the blast for the furnace. And then there were thousands of acres of timberland, and that would give thousands of hours of roaring fires. And finally, the oil was rich in limonite, a limonite the ore from which iron is extracted. And so in 1766, the Batstow furnace was built, and around it, a thriving little town grew. How dear to my heart are the scenes of my childhood When fond recollection presents them to view The orchard, the meadows, the deep-tangled wildwood And every loved spot which my infancy knew The wide-spreading pond and the mill that stood by it the bridge and the rock where the cataract fell. The cot of my father, the dairy house nigh it, and in the rude bucket that hung in the well. The old oaken bucket, the iron-bound bucket, the moss-covered bucket that hung in the well. Two of our lumbermen have been gone for the whole week. It is rumored they went up the river after duck. There were three men taken into custody this last week. One for drinking, one for fighting, and one for just being a plain nuisance. 
The whole gang of guttermen spent past Sunday collecting whortleberries in the bog. This has led to some hard local preaching. There will be a quilting party Saturday, a wedding on Sunday, and a house raising on Monday. But that's after work hours, of course. Anybody free is asked to help the iron master looking for new ore beds, and no horseplay will be tolerated. A brisk northwest gale this week blew the roof off the blacksmith shop, and then a following rain put out the fire in the forge. The smith was not amused. Anybody wanting a ride to Speedwell at the Weymouth is welcome to climb aboard the stagecoach, keep the driver from falling asleep. The old oaken bucket, the iron bound bucket, the moss covered bucket that hung in the well. In order to carry the ore, long shallow draft barges were constructed to be pulled or pushed or pulled along the stream. It was a barge just like this one that George Washington crossed the Delaware. And throughout the Revolution, and long thereafter, the Batstow Furnace worked overtime for the country. The sky was full of ashes and smoke. The air was acrid and gritty. And the Batstow Furnace roared away. From the Pennsylvania Gazette, June the 7th, 1775, an advertisement. Manufactured at Batstow Furnace. A great variety of iron pots, kettles, Dutch ovens, and oval fish kettles, either with or without covers. Skillets of different sizes, being much lighter, neater, and superior in quality to any imported from Great Britain. Potash and other large kettles, from 30 to 125 gallons. Sugar mill gudgeons, neatly rounded and polished at the end. Grating bars of different lengths. Grist mill rounds, weights of all sizes rag wheel irons for sawmills, pestles and mortars, sash weights, and forge hammers of the best quality. Also, that so pig iron as usual, the quality of which is too well known to need any recommendation. seems strange, but many of these peripheral industries, these little enterprises that grew up to service the people who worked at the Batstow Furnace, like farmyards, they persisted long after the furnace itself had disappeared into the dust. The reason was very simple. They were practical. They came in handy. Take, for instance, the blacksmith shop. Well, people have always been interested in wrought iron artifacts. Then the grist mill. Until 30 years ago, that grist mill was grinding out corn and wheat. And the sawmill. People still seem to have a need for good cedar shingles, for hardwood siding, and for rough-hewn wood out of which you can make authentic, original, early furniture, as evocative of the good old days as are the good old tunes. Once in the dear dead days beyond recall When on the world the mist began to fall Out of the dreams that rose in happy throng Lo, in our hearts love sang an old sweet song And in the dusk where fell the firelight gleam Softly it wove itself into our dreams. Just a song at twilight When the lights are low And the flickering shadows Softly come and go 
So the heart be weary, Saturday and long, still to us at twilight comes a love so strong, comes a love so sweet song. Even today we hear love song of yours, deep in our hearts. It dwells forevermore. Footsteps may falter, weary grow the way. Still we can hear it at the close of day. So till the end, when life's dim shadows fall, love will be found the sweetest song of all. Just the song at twilight When the lights are low And the flickering shadows Softly come and go Though the heart be weary As sad the day and long Still to us at twilight Comes the love's old song Comes the love's old song among the gold shine upon my brow today life is fading fast away but my darling you will be always young and fair to me Yes, my darling, you will be Always young and fair to me Where first 
the daisies from The creaking old mill is still Maggie, since you and I were young And now we are aged and grey Maggie, and the trials of life nearly done let us sing of the days that are gone, Maggie, when you and I were young. the days that are gone, Maggie, when you and I were young. But we know the furnace disappeared. The question is why. Well, it happened in the 1830s. Coal was discovered in the Allegheny Mountains. Now, coal is a lot easier to use and cheaper, too, than wood. That meant that the Pennsylvania Iron Masters had the edge over the New Jersey Iron Masters. And pretty soon, Batstow began to show the horrid, dreaded sign of death. Jesse Richards was a fellow who owned the furnace at the time, and he realized that he had to change his allegiance and his investments, and he decided on a glasswork. And so the fires of the furnace were banked, and a glassworks was set up. Thriving industry, too. Town prospered again, and Batstow Furnace became a memory of the past. The glass industry prospered for a while. Then it turned out the glass wasn't of the best quality. It seemed that this sand, ironically enough, was too rich in iron. And so the glass works fell into disrepair. And this is about all that's left glass works of Batstow. Pieces of glass, shards of defeat. People began to move away, leaving their houses to despair in time. Nobody said, hey, this is a village that helped save the revolution. Or Batstow armed the country in 1812. It wasn't practical. After a little while, in 1874, a great fire feeding on disarray and decay destroyed what was left of the almost legendary village. So the little village of Batstow died. You'd think then that this whole countryside would have given way to industrial expansion, would have disappeared, but it hasn't. Let's take a look around you. The grass is a brilliant green. The water, crystal clear. And the forest spreads about us in huge pine barrens. The question is why? The answer, the very practical one to this very impractical epilogue. Philadelphia millionaire, the name of Joseph Wharton, conceived a really ingenious plan. He'd buy up this whole area, keep it as it is, and then he'd dam up the streams and the rivers, create huge reservoirs, and then he'd sell the water to the thirsty people of Philadelphia. It was a very practical plan, and it kept the forest as it was. But then the state of New Jersey said, oh no, no, no. New Jersey water for New Jersey people. Well, after a few years, the Wharton estate decided it would sell 96,000 acres of this unaffected countryside to the state of New Jersey. And after a while, the state decided to look around, see what there was left here, what it could restore that once belonged to the thriving village of Batstow. The years 
creep slowly by Lorena. The snow is on the grass again. The sun's low down the sky, Lorena. The frost gleams where the flowers have been. But the heart throbs on as warmly now as when the summer days were nigh. Oh, the sun can never dip so long as down affection's cloudless sky. In the old days, this horse-drawn coach used to travel through the town, carrying all sorts of goods and passengers from the grist mill, from the sawmill, from the glass works, from the lumber yard, right up here to the company store, which has always been a repository for customer goods and for pleasant conversation. The old stage ran till the automobile shouldered it off the road. But that wasn't too long ago. And so it was pretty easy to restore. And the same is true of this company store. It stands just about as it did back in the good old days. Everything just about the same. Except the light is missing. And that the tourist is expected to restore. I've been waiting three months for that pattern. I'll try me again next Thursday. It might come in by then. Twelve dozen shingles ought to do the job. If it don't, you can always get more. It's better than buying too much. I said muslin. This is finished. Four and a half yards should do. <laughs> Not if you want to flounce it, won't. There's nothing wrong with the basin. I just want a bigger picture, that's all. Uh, do you have any more of that cough syrup? Father can't get to sleep without a tumbler full. Well, this here's a cup ladle. I want a half cup ladle. Now that's the prettiest cotton I ever saw. How much is it by the ball? Mother's so much better now that spring is nigh. That spring's always such a pleasure. Mother is too. Ten of the half quart jars, please. We're going after blackberry tomorrow. And then we're making preserves. And give the boy a bag of lemon drops. You know he did half a quart of wood this morning. We can't really restore the past. We can reconstruct it, like in a waxwork. But all those marvelous energies that built that furnace, that kept it running, they're all dissipated in time. Besides, why bother? We need housing and roads, musical instruments. Well, there is some point. 
If time is like a highway, it helps to know where we've been, so we'll know how far we've come, how far and what direction we may go. And it helps to know what we were, to understand what we are and what we may become. And that's a very practical matter. And we are, after all, very practical people. Tell me the tales that to me were so dear Long, long ago Long, long ago Sing me the songs I delighted to hear Long, long ago, long ago Now you are come, all my grief is removed Let me forget, so long you have rose let me believe that you love as you loved Long, long ago, long ago 